the benefits of importing kangaroos. I reckon it'd be a laugh. And when the government go, oh, inflation is only X percent, I'm looking and going, no, it's not. It's way more than that. Can you see how this will go? Yeah, it's not going to go well unless you've got chickens, but you won't have chickens because they need to be registered. Can you see where this is going? Starvation, war, civil war, fighting, everybody dead. Nobody fighting at charging stations. It's almost like that's the plan. Hello and welcome to what should be a more relaxed Jeff Star video. A while I posted a, on my uh, YouTube community page saying, tell me your subject that you want me to address. I think it was actually, it was a subscriber that initially came up with the idea um, for random rants, three minutes on each subject. So that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to dive into a lot of your comments. Um, some of them will be less than three minutes. So there's quite a few subjects to address. So make yourself comfortable, pour yourself a beverage. This video has been sponsored by Holy Energy. So let me tell you a little bit about them and then we'll crack on with the video. Now, regular viewers will know that I don't often do sponsorships and I actually turn down a lot more than I actually accept. But Holy Energy approached me and they are pretty cool. We've been drinking it at home for the past few weeks. Uh, it's just taken me a little while to get around to doing this video. So this is essentially an alternative to soft drinks. They're powder-based drinks that cut down on 90% of the weight and waste of traditional bottled beverages. They come in three variants, and these are energy, hydration, and iced tea. You've either got a sachet or a tub, depending on what you go for, and then you simply shake it with water. And I use our gravity water filter, and then I add a little bit of ice. And you can also use sparkling water if you shake it with a bit of still water first, otherwise you're just going to make a mess. Now, I know that my viewers are a wily bunch, and you're all already shouting at the screen going, Jeff, what about the ingredients? Well, Mrs. Jeff has vetted these, and she said that it's okay. Uh, we can confirm that as an alternative to most of the bottle stuff that's available, these are pretty good. No sugar, no artificial ingredients. From my point of view, as both a dude and as a dad, what it means is I'm drinking more water and my little boy is also drinking more water. They're little sachets. Uh, he can make them himself. So he'll ask me if I want a drink. He'll go and choose a flavour. He'll go over to the water butt and he does it all and then he shakes it up and he thinks it's great fun. And I'm sat there going, yeah, cool. I just managed to get you to drink 500 millilitres of filtered water. Nice one, dad. He likes the peach hydration drink and my favourite was the citrus cobra energy drink until I discovered the Akai. I can never say that word. Akai? A-C-A-I. Is it Akai? It's a fruit we don't get in England anyway. The Akai and Hibiscus iced tea is really good. It's my new firm favourite. And they work out around about 80p per serving, depending on what package you go for. So if you want to drink more than water, tickle your taste buds. Yeah, I actually wrote that. Uh, and try something different. Why not? They're great for road trips. Just take some sachets in the car, take some filtered water with you, and you can save a fortune by not buying soft drinks at service stations. And if you've got kids, you've got the act of making your own beverage and shaking it yourself. Obviously, you know there's a Jeff deal coming. So if you use the code Jeff5, you get £5 off your first order or the code Jeff, all in capital letters for 10% off of any purchase. Today, I'm on, um, I think this is the pomegranate energy one and um, I, I don't mind them at all. I, I think they're great. Uh, like I say, it's a nice thing to have had in the house and it's one of the only products where I've been sponsored where I've actually emailed the company back and said, we've run out. Can we have some more? So uh, cheers, and then on with the video. Okay, so let's talk about some random rants now that all of that is done and we are refreshed. First one, Carfleet6703 says, what about this one, Jeff? People choosing to do their daily run in the road on busy but narrow country roads, no pavements, at rush hour, around blind bends, because it's their right when there are acres of open, lovely access land nearby that they could run on instead of tarmac towards people just trying to get home. I don't think this is something that I've really dealt with, but if you are an runner and you like going running, surely it's nicer to get yourself off the main road and out into some fresh air. Um, same with, with bicycling as well. You want to go somewhere rural and remote where you get fresh air and you're out within nature. Um, don't understand people who run in urban environments. Next one, Mr. G, the benefits of importing kangaroos and introducing them to the wildlife. Um, hello, Mr. Sheep, this is a kangaroo. I'd like you to meet him. Mr. Kangaroo, this is a sheep. If you could both please shake hands. Um, the benefits of importing kangaroos. I reckon it'd be a laugh. 
quite simple. I've got nothing else. I've got nothing else on that. I just reckon it'd be a laugh. Why not? We've got plenty of space for them, so long as they're going to be warm enough in the winter, if they keep themselves to themselves and integrate with society, then that will be okay. But what I don't want is I don't want them coming over here trying to bring their kangaroo courts, see what I did there, uh, actual kangaroo courts and saying, you know, we're going to come over here, we're all going to live in this one place, we're going to live by kangaroo law, we want to be judged by kangaroo law, and we don't want your police coming in, and, you know, we don't want to abide by your laws, we want to abide by our own kangaroo laws, and then slowly we want to take over the country and make the whole country abide by the kangaroo law that we're bringing over here. That wouldn't be good. But if the kangaroos are going to come here and sort of assimilate and become part of our nature and get to know us and respect our cultures, respect our way of life and respect our sheep, then that's great. I'm all for importing more kangaroos. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, Christian Kirkins. Poor quality gaskets in engines causing oil leaks after a few years. Modern car gaskets are crap and harden, causing engine problems. I feel like this is part of the planned obsolescence. Expensive leaks will either damage the engine or cause the car to become uneconomical to repair. This is a really good one. Um, I think the wider picture here is poor quality parts in general. But with an engine gasket, like a head gasket, that's a big deal. But with cars in the old days, a failed head gasket wasn't the end of the world. Your car would overheat, you go, oh, my head gasket's gone. You take it to a garage, they do the gasket, maybe you have to send the head away to get the head skimmed and then put it all back together and the car works. But with modern vehicles, it's almost like things are getting more complicated than they ever were before. And the vehicle's more likely, a modern vehicle is more likely to be, um, you know, a, a write-off due to a gasket failure than an older vehicle is. Everything has gone backwards. It's not just gaskets. It's all replacement parts. Problem is, it's all just coming from China, isn't it? And it's all rubbish. We saw this in the classic car world as well. I was very involved in the classic car world before YouTube sort of took off. And this was something that Practical Classics would write about time and time again. The fact that they cannot get good quality reproduction parts and many of the parts that they do buy from suppliers just don't last. So I think it's a problem across the board um i don't drive anything older than about 19 i've bought a new one i've bought a brand new car i think it's a 1998 uh, but that's as new as i go and interestingly you don't know this yet because nobody's been told but ian from cherished vehicle insurance messaged me a video earlier on of his 2008 bmw 320 diesel m sport saloon do you remember i posted that video we both had the same car for a little while the one i bought for john groats ian got his for free he took the engine out and did all of the chains did everything to make that car sound and secure so he could use it Time and change went again today. Engine is goose. Car is going on Facebook Marketplace. Spares or repair. Ian is going back to driving his old Land Rover Defender. And that's a car from 2008. So I think people are starting to realise that the modern stuff, unless you're buying something that's very simple, they don't work. Good comment. Uh, Sisyphus Apprentice. Here's one for you, Jeff. Not particularly topical or controversial in the literal sense, but a subject that is very close to my heart. When are we going to abolish the ridiculous biannual clock changing fiasco? It serves no useful purpose other than giving the elite an extra hour of time around the barbecue. For those three days when the sun continuously shines at the expense of all those additional accidents that result from falling out of bed an hour earlier on the last Monday in March. Let's stick to Greenwich Mean Time and do so with pride. Is Greenwich Mean Time the one that's in the summer or the winter? Because I absolutely hate short evenings. There is nothing... The worst part about Britain is the fact that after about... It's basically October, late October until pretty much May, the country is miserable and, and you're just finished after about 4 p.m., um, so I don't really mind the changing clocks, but I am more bothered about the fact that it's dark in the winter. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, Tim says, increase in petrol prices over the years and see if there's a correlation in the increase with electricity costs now. Hmm, good one. I'm not sure. I mean, when I started driving, petrol was 79.9 pence a litre. And I think you've got to compare the cost of petrol with annual wages. And the thing is, the cost of petrol has more than doubled in the time that I've been driving. Wages have not. And the price of houses has more than doubled as well. So basically, 
nothing makes sense because nothing moves in a linear way and these things don't go up in price at the same sort of rate, do they? But we know that we're being lied to about inflation as well. And the only one that I've got as a really funny example is um, I quite like mineral water. Used to buy a lot of mineral water, a bottle, a pack of six. Mineral water used to be about £3.10. You're now approaching five quid for a pack of six. I think it's Buxton or whatever they are. Mineral waters. And when the government go, oh, inflation is only X percent, I'm looking and going, no, it's not. It's way more than that because I can see it in the supermarkets. And again, that's a whole conversation because we don't have a cost of living crisis. We have a corporate profit crisis. Totally different thing. The uh, all the big corporations, supermarkets are absolutely taking us for a ride and it's driving everything up. And nothing ever comes down, does it? Nothing ever comes down. Um, right. A user with not a proper username says, Jeff, rant about lorries trying to overtake each other on two lane carriageways when they are both limited to the same top speed. Don't need to. I did it all in my East to West challenge when I was on the A14 around Kettering. That was me at my most angry. Um, I appreciate that I have a lot of drive. Of, uh, there's another question about this further on as well. I do appreciate that I have a lot of followers who are lorry drivers. And I appreciate that the stuff that we buy has to get around. But I do think that there should be a better way of managing our roads but i think this also comes down to better lane discipline for all drivers britain when you drive on the continent you realize britain has absolutely shocking lane discipline and it just slows everybody down um so i'm not going to rant about lorry drivers because i appreciate that they have to get to where they're going um but it's, it's, a, it's a bigger subject, that one, basically, because you can't please everybody when you talk about that. Uh, Hunter Duval says, Jeff, lose the hat. Are you happy now? Uh, Based Armchair says, three minutes on the stupidest things you've ever seen in the media. Got to be so stupid that it's hilarious. I saw an article earlier in the week where someone tried to drown their partner in a dog bowl. Um, honestly, one of the stupidest things I've seen in the media is... There was this chap, right? And he was out taking some photos of his car. And he, he stood there, like, taking pictures of the car. And he saw a black animal walk up the field. And he thought that it was a big cat. And this absolute imbecile made a video about it. Put it on YouTube, claiming that he'd found a black panther in whatever shire it was that he lived in at the time. Put this video on YouTube, claimed he'd found a black panther. Uh, and, um, and then it went really viral. And every single newspaper in the country picked up on this. Now, the stupid thing about that was, if he'd looked properly when he was editing the video, he would have known that the owner of the dog that he was filming, when he thought he was filming a black panther, was actually walking slightly further down the field. But he was so focused on the animal that he thought was a panther, he didn't notice that. When the video went on YouTube, about the third person to watch it noticed that actually it was a dog and the person was walking down the field. But the mainstream media... All of them, this video and this story about this panther that was filmed by this idiot from YouTube was all over every single local news website. So I think that is the most ridiculous thing that I've ever seen in local media because it was so obvious to debunk and yet they published all of it. Uh, and when you think about the serious things that the newspapers neglect to mention, it uh, just shows you what the newspapers are actually for. Thanks for that one. Tim Hicks says, how long is it going to take Keir Starmer and co to completely ruin the UK? Well, I posted this on my community page three weeks ago. And uh, well, Tim, I didn't think it would be as fast as it has been, but they've done it, haven't they? Uh, record must be some sort of Guinness World Record that, you know, the shortest time to ruin a country. Simon Priestley says, a tech firm goes down this morning and some dudes on trains could only pay with cash. This should be an eye opener for folk. Yeah. So this was just the other week when we had the big outage and people were struggling to pay for things. Um, you should always carry a bit of cash with you because what if your phone battery dies? There's so many what ifs. You should always carry a bit of cash. Let that be a lesson to you. And I think if I've got any hope in the dystopian future into which we are headed, my hope is that the systems that they are building won't have the storage the data the batteries and the power to actually function in the way that they want them to function and i think the flaws in technology could be on our side in the future um b hindi bars behind bars says backyard chicken owners will be legally obliged to register their birds with the government from october even if you just have a single pet chicken that's in spite of a public consultation being overwhelmingly against this stupid government idea discuss 
What is there to discuss about that? That is dystopia right there, isn't it? You can't even keep chickens. Why can't you keep chickens? Because it's food. What do chickens produce? Eggs. What are eggs? One of the best, healthiest, most natural, oldest sources of protein that you could possibly eat. Your government doesn't want you to eat. Your government doesn't want you to be healthy. Disgust. Uh, disband the BBC says... I wouldn't want you to get demonetized because of my suggestions, Jeff. So I'll just keep my mouth shut. Bearing in mind, one of my videos got demonetized yesterday. And all I did was talk about EV vans on the Isle of Wight and joke about the fact that the workers were mostly drinking tea and not fixing the potholes. YouTube didn't like that. Got demonetized. Don't know why. Uh, Michael Matthews says, disposable nappies. It's never mentioned in climate change. In raw, is raw sewage actually killing rivers? Organic, something eats something eats something, or is it the cocaine, bleach, hydrochloric acid, etc. in the output? Um, very, very good points here. Disposable nappies. Yeah, every single disposable nappy that you have ever worn, and every single disposable nappy that I have ever worn, um, is still, it still exists. It's still around. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably go find them all. Um, they don't biodegrade. They do last forever. And they are horrendous. However, they are generally made by the same companies that are all involved in big pharma and all that sort of stuff. And they can't be touched, as we know, which is the exact same thing as the whole net zero, let's save the planet, let's sort out recycling, but nobody is stopping Coca-Cola or the Pepsi-Cola company from making plastic bottles. Um, same thing. Uh, net zero and saving the planet and stopping pollution and all that stuff. It's, it's for you and me to do. It's not for big business. They've got shareholders to please. They shouldn't be involved in any of that. It's just on you and me. Remember that. Thanks for that comment. Um, Michael Matthews. Why do people look through a telescope for aliens when they should be looking through a microscope? That's actually a really superb little point. I've just ordered, after seeing on Instagram, an advert for um, a microscope that my kids can mess with. And there's a whole load of stuff that I've never really looked into, like parasite theory and all this sort of stuff. But when you start zooming in on things with a microscope, the world gets really weird really quickly. And because I bought this thing on Instagram, obviously all the cookies on my computer have told my social media that I enjoy watching videos of things massively zoomed in. And now my social media is full of people taking weird things like, what are those crisps in America? Cheetos. Someone got a microscope cracked open a Cheeto, put that fluid or whatever it is on it, and then zoomed in on it and found that there were tiny, tiny parasites cruising around in these, what were essentially just deep fried crisps. Um, so yeah, I, I think the weirdness in the world, it gets stranger as it gets smaller. Um, and Ant-Man, if you've watched the movie Ant-Man, you'll know all about this. So yes, I agree with you, basically. Danny D says, what happens when in years to come, the old people will be driving electric cars? Forget the rights in Leeds. The charging station rights will be countrywide. Um, honestly, are we going to have riots at charging stations when everybody's got electric cars? No, nah, I don't think we are. I don't think we're going to get that far. I think there's going to be some big cataclysmic event that's going to wipe out most of humanity. And I really don't think we're going to get to the stage to see that. Also, the whole goal of introducing electric cars was never to get you out of your car and into an electric car. It was never to replace every petrol and diesel car with an electric car. It was only ever about reducing car ownership. That's the agenda that they're following. And if people don't wake up and start, I don't know, overthrowing things, or watch what I can and can't say then um, we'll head for a future where nobody owns a car. So no, they won't be right to charge stations because A, the people won't be here and B, they won't own the cars anyway. Um, Danny D, another one from me. I've got three from him, actually. Cars with corners cut off their number plates. I'm assuming you mean... Do you mean like number plates when they're shaped for the size and position of the number plate on the back of the car? Certain cars, that works really, really well. Jaguar S-Type Rover 75. Um, cars with corners cut off their number plates. Oh, no, I know what you mean. Now, you're talking about bell ends. Um, I would put those in the same automotive category as 3D number plates. Don't do it. Uh, another one. How about people in a queue at the till who suddenly forget something and keep everybody else waiting while they go and get it? There's ways that you can do that, right? You can do that in a way that you can be super quick and you can minimise the disturbance because I'm quite chaotic. So I am the sort of person that would do that, but I would never put anybody out. I would go to the back of the queue if I was going to be more than three seconds. Um, I think in life generally, some people 
are incredibly selfish and think that the world revolves around them. There seems to be a bit of an epidemic of that at the moment. People thinking that the world revolves around them when it doesn't. So I think that's the situation that you're discussing. Um, no, go to the back of the queue. Uh, Tweed532 Dave H. Why is the back window of the Volvo always misted up as per the vlog earlier today? 19th of July, 2024. Discuss. This is actually funny. I posted a video and I was driving along and it was hot. It was like a warm day and everybody was asking why the rear window was steamed up. The answer was that night I had accidentally left my boot open. Not unlocked, completely open, completely open. So what you were looking at wasn't um, a misted up rear window. It was condensation because the boot had been open. It condensated and I hadn't wiped it. I just shut the boot down. So the whole boot was soaking wet. All the glass in the back of the car was completely soaking wet. Um, if it looks like my cars are misted up, then it's probably just because they're not clean. Because I, I, I don't, I don't keep my cars all that clean. So that's that. That is an answer, isn't it? Um, Sharkster Games says, make YouTube shorts short again. I'm sick and tired of the point being dragged out. Just show the damn thing now. I agree. You know, you've got these YouTube shorts where it's like, you will never believe what happened to such and such when he jumped off this ship. The consequences were going to be dire. In this video, I'm going to show you what happened. When... Just tell us what happened. I don't do YouTube shorts for that reason. Uh, my videos are as long as they need to be, and I try not to drag them out. Uh, Thomas says, why don't EV charge stations have canopies and access to lose? Because the whole rollout of the EV thing and EV infrastructure has not been well thought out. It has been done by companies who are on the take. They want government subsidies. They want the easy money and they want to do the job and get out of there and go do it again. Uh, Orwellian Biker says, should we move countries? I think so. I've not worked out where to. I'm told that Poland might be OK. I like the idea of Texas. Um, I know New Zealand isn't ideal in terms of the way they're locked down during the pandemic and whatnot, but I quite like the idea of New Zealand, mostly because I speak the language. Um, but I just don't see what is left in Britain to stay for. Um, even if none of the conspiracies that I think are going to come true do actually come true, I think we're in major trouble. So what's the point in staying here? You know, like bringing up kids in England, what kind of future have they got? What kind of jobs are they going to get? What's the country going to look like? How safe is it going to be? Country's finished. Yeah, leave the country is my conclusion. Sierra November Kilo says, when is this fiat money Ponzi scheme going to end? Not only are we paying extortion up for the surcharge on our form of exchange, but the mega billion dollar owners of all the equity out there need there to be constant inflation for them to not feel like they're losing money. I think it's already failed. I think that's what part of the reason that everything that we're seeing happen is happening. I think the um, world never really recovered after 2008. And I think they are just squeezing the last few drops of the lemon. I think that's where we're at. Yeah, so to answer your question, I think it's failed. Um, another one from this same person. Why is it when you're midway composing a response to a video, an advert cuts in and poof, your comment is gone? I can't answer that one. Um, I don't ever get involved with where the videos are placed in, in the, um, with where the adverts are placed in the video. YouTube does all that automatically. But how hard is it from YouTube's point of view to make sure that if you're typing a comment, it doesn't like refresh the page uh, when an advert kicks in? It should just leave it. So I don't know. I apologize on behalf of YouTube for that. Old Scott. DPFs on Mazda cars, what's the point of them? Well, DPFs on all cars, what's the point of them? Well, the point is to drive down emissions, but the point is modern diesel engines are relatively clean compared to old diesel engines anyway, and all DPFs do is shorten the life of the car. Covered it. Um, right, so we've got, since when have we all been potential criminals with all the face recognition at car parks, shops, rail stations, yet real crimes go unsolved? No one knows who stole the car or drove the car who sold the car, even though the car has been past all of these cameras. And I've said this quite a lot on my channel as well. The infrastructure that they're putting in is not for you. It really is that simple. Um, another one, and this is quite funny. Why does manufactured cat food have so much pea protein and grains in it, given that all cats are obligate carnivores? Money. Money. It's cheap, isn't it? They convince us that we need to buy this cat food and we don't look at the ingredients because we go, oh, it's just a cat and it's marketing and it's on telly and it should be okay. And when you actually read the ingredients, uh, it's rubbish. And probably all of our pets are dying young or younger than they should because we're feeding them the wrong thing. Tom Hadler, North Somerset to change Black Bin collection from fortnightly, it used to be weekly, down to three weekly. There's a news article on the BBC about it. Where exactly is all 
the money going that we keep paying in taxes for everything council tax uh, and, and like where we are as well in the Malvern Hills, we have a precept, so we pay an extra bit on top, which is compulsory to the Malvern Hills Trust, and they're dodgy as hell. Um, so yeah, where is all the money going? Because you know there's more people, so therefore there should be more tax revenue. So services should be getting better, not worse. P twenty four hours Smith, Jeff. Here is something that makes no sense. Re Ulez, I've just replaced my two thousand nine Citroen Buralingo. It's a one point six HDI. And I've replaced it with a 2006 Kangoo 1.6 petrol because the Kangoo is ULES compliant and the Berlingo is not. However, the road tax for the compliant Kangoo is double that of the non-compliant Berlingo. Are people aware of the emissions levels? I might pull this out and put it in a separate video. But essentially, the reason is the whole thing is a scam and it's based on made up numbers. Does that answer your question? Because a 2009 Citroen Berlingo 1.6 HDI is going to be better for the environment because it probably uses around about half the amount of fuel that the petrol one does. So it's insane, isn't it? I can see that. You can see that. Everyone who watches my YouTube videos can see that. But apparently the people that run the world can't. Or they do. And it's deliberate. Ian, there are very highly qualified scientists calling out the net zero, but the net zero bull but the mainstream media do not engage. Rant on, Jeff. I'm not going to, Ian, because it will just get the channel into disrepute. You know it. I know it. Everybody who's intelligent knows it. And the mainstream media is owned by all the people that are pushing it. I don't know what we do about that. Uh, NRW34260, internet outage, yet they want central bank digital currency. Bangladesh shut down their internet, yet they want central bank digital currency. Can you see how this will go? Yeah, it's not going to go well unless you've got chickens, but you won't have chickens because they need to be registered. Can you see where this is going? Starvation, war, civil war, fighting, everybody dead. Nobody fighting at charging stations. It's almost like that's the plan. Uh, Fraser, why no solar farms at the airport or at port docks or a cover for the cars? I don't know. Um, I think the whole solar industry is a complete scam. That's why we don't have solar farms in really obvious places like over large car parks. Um, I think it's because it's all to do with money and land usage and there's probably no money in putting solar panels on top of a large car park because that makes sense. I think I've reached a stage in life where, thank you, if it makes sense and it's logical to us, then that's not the correct way to do it because we live in clown world now. Uh, Jan White, and we're getting to the end now. Jeff, can you ask how people's fruit and veg are producing this year? Last year, my run of beans were amazing. This year, there's hardly any flowers. On a note of optimism, I've got an excellent crop of rhubarb and the potatoes are growing nicely. Black currants are looking good, but no raspberries at all. I'm in West Wales. It would be nice to have a bit of home veg from around the country. A home veg watch from around the country. That's a great idea for a video. I think my crops must have been restricted to 20 mile an hour by the Senate. So uh, Jeff's home veg watch video will be coming very soon. Uh, Earth Heart 13964. How big cats got into the UK? Now, that's an interesting subject and worthy of another video. But the, I mean, big cats have been documented in the UK since forever. Then they were hunted to extinction. The Romans bought some over here for entertainment. And there's an argument that maybe there's dwindling amounts of, you know, populations from roman times but the big one was in the was it 1972 the wild animals act came in which meant that every animal had to have a permit and there were lots of people that kept things like leopards and monkeys and lions and tigers and instead of you know doing all of the stuff that they needed to do to um get the permit they just released them into the wild and there's lots of stories you know the gentleman that released some pumas onto dartmoor puma and allegedly there's a guy that claims that he released some animals on top of the malvern hills as well so that basically i think a lot of them are heritage populations from then i think there's been a lot of inbreeding i think many of the sightings that we see in the uk are not necessarily like your pure breed black leopard but i think it's um what's called a kellis cat which is essentially like a leopard but like a smaller version we've got i, I think we've probably got a sort of UK specific wild cat that nobody has properly documented yet. That's what I think. There you go. You almost got three minutes on that. Um, 
Right, three minutes on the subject of why the attention span of many people is being eroded by the likes of TikTok. The dopamine chasing goldfish are possibly, allegedly, maybe therefore pushing content creators to public shorts to satiate the headline chasers. Whereas many people want deep dive, detail driven content to understand the nuances of a subject, not just a nudge narrative. At this stage, leave me a comment and say 30 minutes, Jeff. Let me know if you made it to the 30 minute mark, because this is interesting. Uh, how about a test a short where you put out a deliberately sensationalized load of nonsense, then a longer video where you expand on the short and prove that 30 seconds of spin will be swallowed when the truth as exposed to the long form video will not be reaching the guppy generation and how TikTok is very powerful in proving the old adage, a little knowledge is very dangerous. It's a great comment. And I think in that comment, you've actually answered quite a lot of your own questions. I don't post YouTube shorts and I don't post on TikTok. There's um, Laura, MTB Laura. She'll be here somewhere in the comments. She comments on my live feeds. Um, Laura approached me. We got to know each other online. Sounds like we're dating. We're not. Um, and basically, Laura runs my TikTok for me. And she edits bits and bobs out of my videos and puts them up on TikTok. I don't know if there's any benefit to that. Now, that's interesting as well. At the moment on TikTok, I've only got about 8,000 followers. You don't earn any money until you get to 10,000. And I don't get a huge amount of views either. So it'd be very interesting when I get to 10,000 on TikTok to see what the money is like. Because with YouTube, the longer your video, the better quality the content, and therefore the advertisers see that as a quality video and your pay rate will be slightly higher. So it'll be interesting to see what this video does as well. Although, because this is a longer video, I suspect it will get less views, which is exactly in line with what this person's just said. However, the flip side of this is, I think, because content is getting shorter and shorter and less quality, I think we do seek out good quality content. And I find when I find a video that I'm really engaged with, I concentrate on it and I really listen. So if it's something like, um, you know, the Vin Wiki story is a really good example as well. So I will, I could listen to Ed Bolian talking about cars for hours and hours and hours. And some of the podcast stuff that I've been enjoying, less Joe Rogan lately. It's been a while since Joe Rogan's done an interview that I've actually wanted to listen to. But I tell you what I did really enjoy, the Stig chatting to former Top Gear producers and, you know, Ben Collins talking about the old Top Gear experiences and how those stories came around and how the road trips worked. And you're essentially, you're not watching overly edited content. You're just watching orators. You're watching people tell stories and you're more listening to it. And I think there's more of a gap for that sort of content. This kind of, I mean, this is essentially a podcast, isn't it? You don't need to watch this video. You could just be listening to it. And I think it, what it does is as the world moves to Maybe we'll move to two forms of people. Maybe there will be people with short attention spans and maybe there'll be people that still have the ability to think. Great comment. Thank you. Um, Dwayne Pipes says, resurrection, it's a thing as proved by royalty. How? Don't know. Maybe they're aliens. Um, and there was another comment that I don't think I included it in this, but it went all on about flat earth and all this sort of stuff. And I, I it, it could be hollow. It could be flat. It could be round. That's an email. Um, prove it. Nobody can really prove it, can they? Nobody re can really prove it. I struggle to believe that we are standing on a ball that is spinning at however many miles an hour and we're all kept in place by gravity because um, my, my, my little brain struggles to process that. And the only time I've ever seen curvature is in the lens of a GoPro. But um, don't know. Happy to sit on the fence on that one, whether the fence is on a globe or a flat plane or a hollow earth or a dome. With a firmament, firmament, could be that. It's definitely getting a bit Truman Show, isn't it? Last couple, um, Paulo, Pauli Gontieri. Film yourself as a traditional Jaguar driver in the style of Arthur Daly in a Series 3 XJ6 or XJ40. Uh, I like that idea, but I'll probably wait for the winter because you need a big coat and a hat and a cigar and um, a lot of leather and wood. But I do like that idea. Last one. Soviet Union defector says, how about paying one euro or 50p for using public toilets which are never cleaned at German, EU, maybe British service stations when it's obviously illegal to poo a wee on the pavement like our dogs can? I actually drove to Finland from East Anglia having to limbo under the Dutch and German service station toilet page barriers out of principle of believing we have a right of free wee, especially when we had filled up and paid for fuel. I didn't know that you have to pay for them in Germany and Holland. Um, no, I, I, I agree. I believe that you should have the right to a free Wii. 
uh, we shouldn't have to pay to go to the toilet. And I think that's one of the basic things that local authorities, services, the council, government should be dealing with. I think there are certain basics that allow society to carry on and allow civilization to function in a civilised manner. Removing your rubbish is one. And yes, we should be responsible in recycling and put it in the correct bins and helping with all that sort of stuff. But the basic services should be there once a week. And um, toilets, yeah, toilets are absolutely a given. You shouldn't have to pay that should be part of you know that should be some of the basic stuff that is covered by taxation but um that's sensible and as we've learned from earlier on in the video things that are sensible aren't always correct in the modern world thank you very much for watching and if you're wondering why i look so tired in this video yesterday was the meteor storm and i woke up I don't think I'd gone to sleep, actually. And about two o'clock in the morning, I gave up trying to sleep. I haven't slept much this week. And uh, I went for a drive and I sat somewhere very high. Not on like this. And I sat like this. And I looked out the window and I watched the stars. And I saw some fantastic shooting stars. I absolutely saw one with like a full on tail. Um, that was pretty cool. And I saw a weird helicopter with red and green lights that hovered very strangely for a long time over one certain area and it wasn't on any of my flight radar scanning apps don't know what that was all about but that's why i look like absolute crap that's why i look knackered that is your comments let me know what you thought of the video and most importantly let me know if you made it to the end of the video and that proves that you are not part of the tiktok generation thank you very much for watching